previously, we have inserted slabs, and the loads applied are uniform area loads that was entered in the slab properties. We will now explore how to input other types of slab loads, such as slab line load. In the plan view, select the slab bounded by grid A, B, 2, and 3. In the load editor tab, click on edit load. The slab load editor will appear. It is similar to beam load editor, but has additional surface loads types. You will learn how to insert slab line load. At the bottom left most is the global coordinate system. The local axis coordinate system is shown at the corner of the slab. In the loading types tab, click uniform load. Notice all other slab loads layer will be turned off. Ensure G load case is selected. In the 3D orientation cube, click on top. View direction will change to top. In load properties, ensure load direction is gravity. Pick the start point on the load, pick the end point, ensuring it is approximately vertical. The line load, L1, will be created. Press escape key to end the line load creation mode. Rotate the view a bit by right click and drag. To edit the load, select the line load name in the load folder or in the 3D diagram. For measure type, choose distance. The load properties will show the location and magnitude of the load in the table. The DX and DY is with reference to the local axis origin. Change the values as shown, DX 1 and 2 equals 1000, DY 1 and 2 equals 1000 and 4000. Click update and the line load will be updated to the new values. Let's try inserting the wall load on the slab. Click on wall load. Under wall load library, choose any preset wall load. Left click on first point. Left click on the second point. The load will be created. The wall load position can be changed checking insertion. Followed by changing the coordinates of the start and end point. Then click update. Press escape key to end the load insertion. OK to exit the dialog. The line and wall load will also be shown in the plan and 3D view. Slab loads can also be inserted directly on plan view. Zoom in the slab between grid B, C, 3, and 4. In the Loading tab, click on the point, Line and Area Loads icon. The slab load properties will appear. Select Line Load. Select Load Case G, Key in Load Magnitude. Left click on the first point. Left click on the second point. The line load will be created. Alternatively, after selecting the first point, press F2 for manual input. Then enter delta x, comma, delta y, with reference to the first point. Press enter. The line load will be created. A brick wall load can be similarly created by selecting wall type. Remember to key in the wall height. Click start and end point. The wall load will be created. Close the slab load properties. Select the three loads and delete it. The final model will be a four-story building. We will now insert the other floors. Go to Building Setout, Stories drop-down, Insert Story. Alternatively, in the Structure tree, right-click on Story and pick Insert Story. Input total number of stories equals 4. OK. This automatically inserts Story 2, 3, and 4. Although created, these new stories have no members at all. Story with members modeled will have the blue circle marking shaded in the structure tree. Note, axes are shared amongst all stories. Hence, it's not necessary to copy or create additional axes for different stories. We will now edit the information of the stories. Pick Edit Story from the same Story drop-down menu. The Edit Story dialog will appear. Hold Control key and multiple select Story 1, 2, and 3. Then click Define Selected Stories as Similar. Under the column Similar Story, we can see exactly which are the similar stories. This means that Story 1, 2, and 3 will now be identical. Since we have already inserted members in Story 1, these members will be automatically copied to Story 2 and 3. In addition, changes to a particular similar story will be applied automatically to all similar stories. The column H shows all the story heights which defaults to 3 meters, which can be changed. 
Note, for stories to be identical, they must also have same story height. In a real project, story 1 is the ground floor and should have shorter story height as it's the stump height and hence should not be made similar. However, since this is just a training model, we will leave it as it is. Also be careful that ensure the story height is always larger than deepest beam depth in that story, otherwise the column and walls will have zero clear height, resulting in erroneous analysis and design forces. Level column shows the elevation level of each story. This is with reference to first story bottom level, input box below, which is the reference level of foundation. The level figures are automatically calculated based on the story height. The level figures are for information only and have no effect on the analysis. These levels information can be displayed in the floor plan drawings as well as beam elevation drawing, if preferred. Label defines the prefix label of all members in a particular story. 1 means beams will in story 1 will be labeled 1B1 and columns will be labeled 1C1. We can change this. Type G for story 1, R for story 4. This means that story 1 members will be labeled GB1, GC1. Story 4 members will be labeled RB1, RC1. Description is for your own reference. Example, you add description ground for ST01. Ender roof description for story 4. D1, D2, wall 1, and wall 2 are seismic parameters. Read the notes below when you click on the cell for more information. Imposed load reduction can be applied. If you input 10, it means 10%. Under imposed load reduction, if you click apply, the program will automatically apply imposed load reduction according to the selected code. Click reset to reset values to zero. Effective top story number and number of rigid basements affects both the seismic analysis as well as the automatic wind load calculation. For example, if there is one basement modeled as story 1, then rigid basement should be set to 1, then no wind load will be auto-applied to the story. Foundation depth. This is best explained by referring this diagram. Foundation depth is the depth allocated for the foundation elements below ST0 level. ST0 is the analytical support, which is always bottom of ST1 column. The recommended value entered should be at least equal to foundation element depth or the depth measured from the footing soffit to the top of fill level. Foundation depth affects the auto-calculated filler surcharge height in the pad footing design. This value also affects the detailing of the column, example the starter bars and quantity, as the length of column and detailing includes the foundation depth. This value does not affect the analytical model as an analysis, the support of the column is always auto-created at ST0 level. Footing label is the prefix applied to pad footing. Footing description is for your own information. Click OK to save and exit. Notice that the 3D view now shows story 1, 2, and 3 with identical members. All loads, including the partition wall loads are also duplicated. Story 4, roof has no members, as shown in the plan view of Story 4. In the 3D view, select any slab, press delete. As expected, all slabs in similar stories will also be deleted. Press the undo icon to undo the slab deletion. Similarly, if you make changes to any members or loads, all members in the similar story will be updated automatically. We will now copy members from story 1 to story 4, roof, to populate it, instead of modeling from scratch. Press escape key to deselect all elements. Pick generate story from the same story dropdown. Under source story, pick story 1, and then pick story 4 as target story. Note you can pick and choose what you wish to copy. Click OK. Click Yes to confirm. Members will be copied from ground floor to roof. Click close and check that members are indeed created in story 4. Obviously, the roof is not exactly the same as the ground floor. Create a new slab over the lift core since this is the roof level. A simple way to do this is simply to select the adjacent slab, right click, properties. Then click to insert the slab. This is how you copy the slab or other members. We will now change the slab loads as roof loading will be different. 
we can do it, one slab at a time, by going to the slab properties, but this will be tedious. There is a much easier way, which is to use the slab table. Activate the plan view. Press escape key to deselect all previously selected members. Right-click anywhere on the plan view to expose the context menu. Select member table slab table. The slab table allows all the parameters of the slab in a table. If no slab is selected, all slabs will be shown in this table. If you selected a few slabs on the plan view, then only the selected slabs will be listed. The slab table is a very powerful way to check your inputs, as you can see all slab parameter at once. You can also change any parameters of any slab, one by one, by simply typing a new value, or selecting from drop-down menu. Or you can change it in a batch mode for all the slabs. Click on the header queue, Imposed Load. The entire columns will be highlighted. Click Columnwise Edit icon, at the top. Enter 0.7 kN per meter square. Press Enter. All the slabs imposed load values will be changed. Close the slab table. Let us delete all the partition wall and slab load in Story 4. Go to Modeling tab, click Selection Filter. Click Deselect All, then click Beam, so only beams can be selected. In Story 4, multiple select all perimeter beams. Right-click, choose Delete Loads. In the Delete Loads dialog, choose Wall Load. Click OK. In Select Filter, click to select all, then close. Delete also the slab line loads. Select the slab load, press Delete key. Check both the plan and 3D view to ensure the specified loads are deleted.